When I was little, I wished I could soar through the forest like a bird. Now that I'm older, I don't have to wish. I can experience the real thing. You can too, if you don't mind getting wet. But you might have to hurry. The forest is disappearing. It's not hard to find a giant kelp forest. They're right off the California coast. And there's a lot of coast in California. Giant kelp thrives in shallow, rocky water fed by cold currents. Kelp needs a rocky bottom to cling to, currents to bring in absorbable nutrients, and sunshine for its chlorophyll. Each giant kelp reaches from the bottom to spread its blades in the sun in competition with other kelp. It can grow over a foot a day. Kelp blades below, that don't get as much sun, contribute by soaking up nutrients from the water. Kelp is an algae, and unlike a plant, does not have roots to pull nutrients from soil. A kelp forest is a busy place. A hangout and nursery for fish that shelter in the tangle. The canopy overhead blocks predatory diving birds. The blades further down inhibit open water attacks. Kelp is a refuge from hungry giants. At the base of the kelp forest, each kelp hangs on to rock with a tenacious holdfast. The forest base has its own understory with smaller kelps, red algae, surf grass, and other rock-loving organisms. The rocks and holdfasts are rich in sheltering animals. Lobsters hide in crevices by day, often accompanied by urchins and occasionally by kelp crabs. Sometimes they're packed cheek to jowl, a happy sight for lobster hunters. It's not wise, though, to stick hands blindly in cracks for lobsters. You may get a surprise. California mores spend most of their time in crevices, and although they're not particularly vicious, they'll bite an intruder. A cabazon uses a rock ledge to perch in wait for smaller prey. Nearby, a yellowfin fringehead has found a small hole as both home and ambush spot for its even smaller prey. Prey like this black-eyed goby, keeping close to a safe crack. And this tiny blue-barred goby hiding in the tendrils of a kelp holdfast. In the dark base of a deep kelp forest, this nudibranch crawls in the open, secure in the bright colors that advertise its horrible taste. It follows invisible scent trails laid down by other crawling creatures. A kelp forest is a forest in motion. It dances to the rhythm of nourishing currents and surge.
Sometimes that rhythm picks up to the beat of a storm. Strong surge tears off blades and turns the water into a blender, making transit difficult for bottom dwellers. Strong winter storms annually tear kelp from their rock holdfasts, leaving denuded forests ready for new growth the following spring. Summer and fall brings another danger to kelp, warm water. We might prefer swimming in warmer water, but kelp prefers its water cold and rich with nutrients. If the water warms up too much, the kelp begins to fade and die back. Last year's rich kelp forest is gone. It can recover though, if water temperatures drop enough for long enough. Kelp has another mortal enemy though, that can be unrelenting. Remember those sea urchins tucked in the rocks? They love to eat kelp. A few urchins hiding in the rocks here or there are no problem, but when kelp is scarce, they come out of hiding to hunt in force. They attack whatever kelp they can find. They can climb right up the main stipe of kelp and eat through it, casting the kelp loose from its rock holdfast. The result is an urchin barren, a rocky desert of urchins where there used to be lush kelp. Urchin barrens create their own ecosystems. Brittle stars may move in in the thousands to cover any open space. And sea hares, for some reason, seem to multiply in urchin barrens. The result is rocks constantly swept clean by starving urchins and hungry brittle stars with no chance for young kelp to settle, attach, and start a forest anew. Urchins and warm water can be cyclical events, relenting at times to let kelp rebound. But cycles have been out of balance lately. Sea stars, which prey on urchins, have died in huge numbers due to a withering disease. Thanks to global warming, water temperatures have been climbing to historical highs and remaining there for ever longer periods. So will barrens once again turn into lush kelp forests? We don't know exactly where the new changes will take us, but given the current direction, we have every incentive to curb global warming and to help keep our oceans in balance. And to take a flight through a healthy kelp forest while we still can.